Welcome to the Fort Lewis Medical Simulation Training Center. This is the first of 18 centers established for the training of medical personnel in combat situations. The center is located just northwest of Madigan Hospital in a 10,000 square foot building that has four classrooms, each with a seating capacity of 30. There are four trauma rooms with mannequins that are used to reinforce classroom instruction. There is also 33,000 square feet of outdoor lanes that are used to provide combat simulation with sound, smells, and smoke. One of the main purposes we exist is to make sure that the first time a soldier sees a uh, traumatic combat casualty is, is not on the battlefield. We try very hard to ensure that they have every opportunity to take care of it, at least a simulated combat casualty in our facility. Currently, with nine different classes, this training facility educates and trains over 4,800 students each year. The type of training ranges from basic life support and combat lifesaver to medic train the trainer. What the student comes away from with the uh, basic life support class is a working knowledge of CPR and the ability to administer proper CPR and integrate that with the automated uh, external defibrillator or the AED. Um, the requirement is that they need to meet the American Heart Association standard for cardiopulmonary resuscitation. And again, that's a foundation piece. They must have that prior to attending any of our EMT courses. Other training classes offered at the Medical Simulation Training Center are Basic Life Support Instructor, Emergency Medical Technician, EMT Refresher, Improved First Aid Kit Training, Combat Medic Advanced Skills Training, and CMAST Instructor Course. The Combat Lifesaver Course is a 40-hour course and designed for the non-medical personnel to gain basic battlefield medical knowledge that can save a casualty's life. Combat Lifesaver is a four-day class and in order for it to be an effective class, it really needs to be a lot of hands-on application. Skills, 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 and by doing hands-on application at the end of each day, we now can reinforce those skills that we had discussed in the didactic or the actual lecture instruction part. So we start out on the very first day going over the tactical combat casualty care, TC3 principles for care under fire, tactical field care, and CASABAC care, and then we take them into the three preventable causes of death. By stopping severe bleeding, performing needle chest decompression for a casualty with tension pneumothorax, and maintaining an airway. Then, by administrating intravenous fluids to control shock, they can become the bridge between self-aid, buddy aid, and treatment given by a combat medic. In our backyard, we actually do train the uh, soldiers to work in a care under fire environment. One of the things that I do stress to my students when they first start, I ask the students, how many people have actually been shot at in combat? Because I can't teach somebody how to react when I'm simulating it. Until you've actually been shot at or had something blow up next to you, you really don't apply it. In the 30-hour combat medical advanced skills training course, the soldier medic learns the stark contrast between garrison and combat trauma care. The tactical combat casualty care philosophy emphasizes care under fire, tactical field care, and casualty evacuation. CMAS strives to correct the preventable causes of death by teaching hemorrhage control, needle chest decompression, and advanced airway management. In TC3, however, probably our most primary focus is, is how to treat the casualty without getting killed yourself. If your casualties hurt and out in the open, the days of running out there to save that person are gone. That's how most medics get their Medal of Honor, is posthumously trying to save somebody's life. We would rather sustain the fighting force by getting that patient to cover and then treating them. We also support affiliated organizations and the local community. There have been students from the local reserve component, 
the Navy, Air Force, Marines, and other federal and government agencies. Uh, the Coast Guard has approached us because of their new mission with Homeland Security, boarding vessels and taking on casualties at the same time. Uh, they did not have uh, a program developed for their, uh, for their first responders to take care of or to sustain casualties in a combat environment for a long period of time. So in a sense, some of the combat tactics are being taught in civilian medicine. This expert training is accomplished by using knowledgeable and experienced instructors in the combat medical field. Most of the center's personnel volunteer with their local fire departments and are active within the EMS field. We want our soldiers to be proactive in the preventive medicine things such as making sure to wear the correct body armor and dressing before they go out, making sure that they know where the uh, medical supplies are in each and every vehicle, making sure that they know who's assigned to litter bearing teams, where the combat lifesavers are within the, uh, within the convoy. Those are all pre-checks that are done before you ever roll out the gate and they are part of your battle drills. The center incorporates the state-of-the-art human patient simulators that are so realistic they have been given names. Students must assess the injuries to each mannequin as they would a real casualty. These mannequins provide immediate feedback by having a pulse at the appropriate locations and with the rise and fall of the casualty's chest, the lessons become real. Um, now, with the technology that we have, you have uh, human patient simulators that, that breathe and blink and bleed and, um, uh, and have vital signs. They have pulses and uh, blood pressures and uh, respiratory rates. And uh, um, if you don't do an intervention in the appropriate amount of time, you will lose that casualty. And uh, conversely, if you do a, the correct intervention, you can save that casualty. Also provided is the equipment that soldiers are using in combat, such as the Talon II litter, improved first aid kits, combat gauze, and cat tourniquets. The engagement skills trainer allows us to reinforce care under fire. This trainer uses actual weapons that have been modified to fire laser bullets. With this modification, the weapons have the same recoil and action of a regular weapon, but they have an endless supply of ammunition. The system comes with over 2,000 different engagement simulations to include qualification ranges, shoot, don't shoot, and many other collective training scenarios. You can never recreate um, what it feels like to be in combat. It's that feeling you cannot get unless you're in combat. So the most we can do is just try to stress them out to the best of our ability by yelling at them or putting, you know, simulator uh, bombs or IEDs out there and playing loud war music and I mean it'll, it'll get you stressed out but there's no feeling like actually getting you know shot at and actually dealing with a real life casualty. The medical simulation training center provides state-of-the-art medical training by incorporating live action and realistic simulation technology. The center ensures all students receive both didactic and hands-on tactical medical training. With the knowledge obtained at the MSTC, soldiers and medics gain the confidence necessary to save lives on the battlefield. I expect the students to at least learn the basics in my course. The reason I expect them to at least learn the basics in this course, and I tell them all, somebody wants to see you come back home. And what we teach you here could save your life, it could save your friend's life. I would rather you make the mistakes here in the classroom so you don't make them while you're in combat. <laughs>